Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. I'm LT and today we're going to be working on the 2020 AT4. Plus, I got a little bit of a story to tell you. It's really no secret that I'm not a huge fan of the stock wheels and tires that come on the AT4 HD. They've got this weird like six spoke design. I don't really like the black and the machine little horseshoe things on there. So I'm just gonna be swapping them out for another old set of stocks that I've got kicking around. These are from a 2011 Denali, the 20 inch five star wheels. They've got a 265, 60, 20 on them. They're a little bit shorter than what comes on this truck. The wheels aren't in great shape. They do have just a little bit of pitting on the chrome, but that's all right. I think they look a little bit better than what's on there, and they're not permanent anyway. I'm just going to throw them on there to change it up until I pick out my final wheel and tire. But that's really not what I'm here today for. Now, I recently posted up a couple of pictures of my old truck, a 1996 Chevy 1500 that started out life as a Z71 that had been lifted up six inches in the air. I did something just a little bit different, maybe a little bit unconventional. I lowered it down to the ground. I posted a couple of pictures of it recently and I had a few people ask me, what are the parts that you used to drop that truck down and what did it take? Now I've dug through my old computer and I have a whole bunch of pictures of that old truck. So today we're taking a stroll down memory lane. I originally traded a 99 Mustang GT for this truck and when I got it, it was in pretty rough shape. It was originally sitting on a six inch lift with some 33 1250 15 BFG all terrains. Now the lift was a really old school design. I think it was a Fabtech, but either way, the entire thing was shot. All the bushings and ball joints in the entire front suspension were worn out. So it was time to start from scratch. In order to lower the truck, all of the lift components had to go. Now, luckily I found somebody on Craigslist who I was able to trade with for a couple of stock parts that I needed. But then I went and I bought a whole bunch of new bushings and ball joints, all from Moog, and I completely replaced everything. Then to lower the truck, out back I put a set of drop shackles in, and for the front a set of purple GM torsion bar keys from a 2500 HD. That made the truck sit about two inches lower in the front and four on the rear, but that wasn't low enough. So then I added a flip kit out back for a total of six inches drop, and then I decranked the torsion bars a little bit more for four up front. The thing had a really mean stance and it was killer to drive in the snow. Now, if you want to talk about a transformation of a truck, that's about as good as it gets other than like completely painting it, restoring it and doing an engine swap. I mean, we went from a lifted up truck with sloppy worn out suspension to a lower down truck that you could sling around the corners like a little rally car. That thing was a blast to drive in the snow. And on top of that, the visual transformation, well, that made a huge difference. That truck was a fun to drive. But the next thing I had to take care of was the interior. Since the truck was just about 20 years old, the inside was pretty nasty. So the carpet came completely out and it got steam cleaned along with the seat. And that made a huge difference in the look and honestly the smell of the interior. Next up, I swapped out the original instrument cluster for one from an Escalade that had the 120 mile per hour speedometer. I threw in some blue LEDs and a little bit later took a trip to a junkyard where I grabbed an overhead console and bucket seats and floor console from a Suburban, bolted them in and spruced it up. So naturally, the very next step after cleaning up the truck and making it lower, well, is adding some horsepower. Now it had the L31, uh, that's a 5.7 liter Vortec small block Chevy. They made pretty good power, but unfortunately due to the injection design, well, there's not a lot of power that you can add before you have to start adding fuel. And that can get very difficult, but there are a few small things that you can do to bump up the power of the old L31s. The one thing that I've got to change on any vehicle that I own is the exhaust. The part that came on the truck was a custom welded up piece and it got replaced with a Magnaflow stainless steel catback and it made the truck sound quite a lot better. The only other modification that I made to this truck was a cam, and it actually came from a 95 LT1 Camaro. 
Yes, it is a stock cam and the specs are just a little bit bigger than the L31 cam that came in the truck. I believe it had about 10 degrees more duration on the intake and the exhaust side and just a couple of thousands more lift. Now the reason why I went with a stock cam from another application is because I didn't have a way to tune the computer. I put it on the dyno and that came in about 10 horsepower. Now that's not a lot, but better than nothing. I finished up the last of the modifications to the lowered Z71 in early spring of 2015 and at the time I was living in Idaho Falls, Idaho. So the question is, where's the truck now? I believe it's somewhere down in Texas, or at least that's where the last owner was taking it. You see, just a little bit after I finished up the last upgrades, I got a phone call and I was offered the job that I have today. Right now I live just south of Nashville, Tennessee, and as you can imagine, that's quite a drive from Idaho to Tennessee, and I wasn't able to bring both trucks along for the ride. So the Black Z71, it had to go. But I do want to build another one at some point. And if you guys know what these things are right here, well, these are the torsion bar keys that allowed me to lower the front end. They're from a 2500 HD. I've got another set, so the wheels are kind of turning. And I don't know when it's going to be, but I am going to build another one at some point in time. Now, speaking of wheels, the black AT4 is looking a lot better on the 20-inch Denali wheels, or at least in my opinion. Now, the tires, they are a little bit shorter than the original ones that came on this truck. But it's okay because this is not a permanent solution. If I do keep these wheels on the truck, the tires are going to come off, the wheels will get sandblasted and powder coated, probably a light silver or a gray. And as far as tires are concerned, still not entirely sure, but I do have a set of 35 inch ridge grapplers. They're just a little bit wider than the stock tires and about the same height. I might throw those on or go with like a Nitto 420 street style tire. And I could lower the truck down just a little bit more than it currently is. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and please hit that subscribe button and tune in for more information. Until next time, I'm LT.